Oh, right. Spyro reignited. Year of the Dragon reignited. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Welcome back to the stream, everybody. You turn that off and you leave that off forever. I feel like in the 70s, stuff like that would happen and they would just automatically jump to shit's possessed. And then people would like join from across the town. They would go like to check out the possessed monkey and then it would be written about in a book because the story would be passed on for like a decade and a half. And then some author would investigate people who maybe just heard about the monkey and they would embellish and be like, oh, I saw it. It was possessed. It was definitely possessed. And then in 2021, someone makes an indie game about the haunted monkey. That's how these things go. I don't know why it loads VR, like it says Steam VR, when I, when I try to start this game. I don't think Spyro is VR. It's an Unreal Engine issue. All they have to do is make a, a little checkmark box that says, is this game VR? And then you check it if it is, if not, you leave it off. It's one line of code, dog. <laughs> Not necessarily. Wait a minute. I'm a programmer. How would how would I not know what l one line of code is? Game work equals true. Go back to world one for a sparks upgrade. Okay. Sunrise spring. Here's what you do. A bool. Game works equals true. Yes, bool. Bool. Please make this game work. Now, I don't know what bool is or boolean, but I remember in coding when I did uh, some... I actually did uh, a little bit of coding in, in high school. It was C+. And we did Boolean, and I don't remember what it is or why it is. Let's set the max FPS to 30. Can't notice frame skips if it's stuck to 30. FPS 50 like Spelunky. Hang on. Why is it not... This isn't saving? Hell yeah. Look at that cinematic shit, though. Even within the 30, there's still weird frame skips. I don't know what's going on. Last time I streamed this game, it was running, like, pretty well. And now... Now I feel like something's going on. Oh well. The game breaks at 120. Try full screen. Just Oh, 
Yeah, you might be right. Is currently, if you like. We know. Okay, I won't. So, uh, chat, where am I going to upgrade my uh, sparks? The motion blur is on. No, it's off. By the pool. Spyro, I found an egg, but only Sparks will be able to reach it. There's a small hole that leads to a crawdad farm. I can take him there if he's ready. Crawdad? on those nasty crawdads, I should give you some help. To start, let's practice shooting. Press the attack... Yeah, there's a lot of minigames. You can also move quickly by pressing the charge button, like Spyro. Dragonfly, you can also strafe in any direction. To strafe, hold down the roll left or roll right button, then move with the left stick. Try. On your travels, you'll notice butterflies that give you help, just like in the dragon world. Not only that, but some butterflies will give you special powers, though only for a short time. Just eat any power-up butterfly, then... Someone said, wait until you unlock the Glock. Kind of makes me want to play Pavlov, now that you just said that. Looks like you're ready, Spark. Like, I want to shoot some Minecraft zombies in the face with a virtual Glock. I, I should switch to Spyro VR. Do you remember the, um... Cardboard peripheral that Nintendo released for third person games such as Breath of the Wild. It was like virtual cardboard. Um, you'd put the Labo on your face, but it didn't have a strap and it was really uncomfortable. So the best you could hope to do was just kind of like lay down and have the cardboard on your head. And the resolution was like 12 by 8. And for a game that's not first person, you're just looking into like a diorama box, basically. Labo VR was supposed to be passed around, which is why it didn't have straps. Oh, I understand the intent, especially when you say it like that, but that doesn't make it good. I never had Labo, so I, I'm really not speaking from experience, and I apologize for that. But from what I've heard, Labo... Like, the best part of Labo was building it, and then the actual playing of Labo stuff was, like, maybe 20% as fun. But that's how, like, good Nintendo's got us by the balls. You know what I mean? Like, here we are buying cardboard, which is now sitting in many of our, like, collective drawers.
just just sitting in a closet, voice cracking, not doing anything with it. It was a neat experiment. Honestly, the best Nintendo thing that they've come up with, um, with the weird Nintendo like magic, not even magic, like just different types of playstyle shit. It was Ring Fit. Well, Mario Kart, I haven't played. I didn't, like... Like I said, I like Nintendo's games a lot, but I don't get everything Nintendo does. Um, and the Mario Kart thing, I don't really have room for anyway. So I didn't get that. It looked cool. I watched some videos. The physical... I'm talking about the physical Mario Kart thing. The real-life Mario Kart. So that, that seemed kind of cool, but for me, Ring Fit was like the best innovation. Like, the Switch itself, being more of a portable system, was a good choice. I really appreciate that they didn't go too hard with the gimmicks. Sure, the Joy-Con could be viewed as such, and is used as such, but you can kind of just ignore it, mostly. Most games, you could just play with the Pro Controller. But Ring Fit was genuinely impressive, and I do owe you a Ring Fit stream. That shrimp fresh. Oh, that wasn't a shrimp. I don't know why I said that. Someone said, I invested hard into the Wii U. I'm too scared to buy anything else. <laughs> invested. Um, the Wii U had some cool ideas. Honestly, the, the best uh, thing that ever happened to, with the, the Wii U, in my opinion, was Zombie U right at the beginning. Which is like yeah, using works, the inventory. Uh, the Crawdad King and found the lost egg. Not only that, but some of the dragon magic seems to have rubbed off on you. Now you can pick up gems when they're even further away from Spyro. Sparks has already recovered the egg from the... So did I, um... I, I miss gems. So I, I have to do this again then. W was that it? It's just those two? Oh no, there's there's more. You flew at it and then turned around. I think, chat, I already made up in my mind I don't want this to be a 100% run. I've already heard that this one's kind of a bitch to 100%. And I noticed some of the earlier levels I didn't 100%. So yeah, I'm probably not going to 100%, but we'll, we'll see how I feel by the end of the game. When I get to the end and I'm like, okay, one more stream to 100%, maybe. Vinny, go back. What did I blind? Did I do it again? That's awesome. Someone said, I really hate that chat has a hate boner for this game. Especially considering the fact that this was my childhood. Where's the hate boner? I've seen almost nothing but, like, an outpouring of love for this game. You can't be, like... Like, looking... Are you looking for the negativity? Because I barely see it. I've seen people that are just really happy I'm playing Spyro. Um... So... 
sure, there might be some things like if chat's saying that this game is hard to 100%, I don't think that's negative. I think that's just people's personal experience. If someone in chat was like, Chrono Trigger is garbage. That's my childhood. That's my favorite game. But I also... You can't take that shit with you. You can exit levels from the menu. Just so you know, you also missed a bonus race in World 1. Well, the guidebook here says that I missed something in Sunny Villa, Molten Crater. So yeah, I missed a bunch of stuff in World 1. Up here? Said steps. Chrono Cross had okay music. Wrong think. Wait, was that the race? It was just there? Okay. I thought it was a level I had been to already. Oh, yes, Mushroom Speedway. Are we sure this isn't a Mario Kart level? <laughs> Time attack or race the butterflies? Uh, do I have to do both? Each challenge in order so it rings the deadline. Oh, I, okay, I know this. Got to learn the button somehow, chat. So, you do have to use the fire on the dandelions. It seems simple, but judging by the past Spyro games, it definitely gets harder as you go on. Like, some of these levels really tripped me up in Spyro 2. Hunter is chilling in this level. Wasn't okay, so that was in Spyro 2 as well, where Hunter would be in these levels and voice crack with you. What did what did he do? Like what does he do? You wanna get him for secrets? Secret egg? Has Stuart Copeland ever said which of the three Spyro soundtracks is his favorite? No. Vinny, I'm curious, do you like Turok 2 or not? Is it a love-hate situation? Yeah. I, I, uh, 
I loved it in my memory until I revisited it, and those levels were just massive. I still hope to do a Turok 2 mod showcase, even though there's not a whole lot of mods for it. I've done it before, I wouldn't mind doing it again. I've never played Turok Evolution or any other Turok game. I'm just looking for Hunter right now. Um, I've only played the N64 Turoks. I think Rage Wars is underrated. Same for Turok 3, both good games. Turok 2 is the best in the series, but it, in my opinion, like, from a gameplay standpoint, it's the best, and weapon standpoint. Uh, but... The level design is fucking atrocious. So I'll always have good memories of that. Vinny the Mushroom. Oh, here we go. I'll always have good memories of Turok. Whoa! A bunch of sheep and flying saucers just came out of nowhere and started blasting up the race course! But I'm not in any rush to go through those levels again, especially that horrible cave level. Looks like I'll have to hop in my plane and teach him some manners. Shoot down the sheep UFOs. Look out, sheep! Here I come! Press B button to fire A or X for turbo. Whoa! Mate, what? <laughs> Whoa! A bunch of sheep and flock. Looks like I'll have to hop in my plane. Look out, sheep! Well, this is fucking unexpected. Space too. <laughs> Where's the laser weaponry? Check it out. The squad leader had abducted this egg. Tater. through the green checkpoints in order. Use the red dots to guide you. Diddy Kong Racing should have got a sequel. I mean, it was almost getting one in the form of Donkey Kong Racing, but... How was the DS Diddy Kong Racing port? Wasn't that kind of bad? Bad. Too much... it had touchscreen stuff. Got rid of Banjo and Conker. <laughs> no fun allowed. Oh, 
Okay, so this is a lot more difficult than I expected. Even if I've done everything right except hit one boost. Wow. You can't miss a single ring. Lex wins. <laughs> world will return to a green kryptonite haze. Yeah, um, by the way, Full screen was a good idea, changing from windowed full screen. It seems to just run better in full screen mode. So schlogging the game into full screen was a good choice. Full screen window has usually been my go-to for a lot of things because it makes tabbing out easy. And some games just, I don't know, they just work fine like that. But right now... This is better. No, I mostly play in full screen these days. I don't do windowed anymore. When I got, like, a, a decent second monitor... The only reason windowed mode is good for Sunday stream is because some games don't tab out and let me capture them properly. Wow, what a bunch of horse shit that was. And, and um, you want me to 100% this game? Well, it's kind of hard to find shortcuts when you still have to end up in going through the green rings. To Daniel Kong, this is not. gets worse later on. I mean, I don't know how much patience I'm going to have for levels like this later on. I'm getting, you know, life's, lifespan is limited, chat. <laughs> on this... Oy. Now I spend all of lap three trying to catch up to one butterfly. I somehow shaved two seconds off of that. Sorry, what did you just say? John Egg.
Dragon Marine. Vinny, how many impressions can you do? Uh... Someone made a video ranking my impressions, and it was like... It was like over a hundred, but it's, it's like variations of the same three voices. <laughs> it's really... I mean... It's a little bit more than three, but I don't know. Here's the thing. If I were to get a letter grade on the voices that I do. Right. And then you would count only those with a C plus or above. It wouldn't be as many voices. My hero from Ricky voice is pretty good. I haven't played it in a while. I, I had this inclination to maybe return to Xenoblade on my own time, but I haven't had the motivation yet. It's there, though. There, there's, um... I have to want to return to it naturally. And I, I felt like a couple times I was listening to Xenoblade music, or someone mentioned it in a video or something, and I was like, oh man, that game was good. So... And I kind of still remember what was going on in the story. It's not like I've totally lost it. I would just need to spend one time playing it, getting a refresher, which is granted a lot of information, but I think I could still do it. I just need to find the time for it. Hey, Spyro! Zoe told me that if we hit that doodad up there, the portal will open. Why don't you try spitting this rock at it? You picked up a... Someone said, how far did you get? Um, I have it on the Full Sauce channel. The last time I played the game, I recorded it. And, um, I was... just after a very major point in the game. It was right after Prison Island. Friend Spyro. The sorceress caught this naughty bird letting off rockets in her fireworks factory, but I'm willing to release him into your custody, provided you pay his outstanding fines. No. Oh dear Spyro, you really should pay up. I think he's pining for the fjords. Perfect. Pining for the fjords? That's good. Oh, my good friend Spyro. Ha <laughs> ha, what a sucker! Uh, that is, it's a far, far better thing you do today, Spyro, than you have ever done. And, uh, well, so forth, etc. You get the idea. <sighs> Sergeant Bird, 90068. Awaiting orders, sir. Um, I think you'll have to find your commanding officer for that. Hey, what are those things? These are the latest military hardware. DPX-9 rocket launchers, state-of-the-art. So why didn't you use them to escape? Ooh, uh, because, because I have limited ammo, <laughs> and I wanted to conserve it. For this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Say, where'd you come My from? new favorite character in the game. They've all been dead for a thousand years or something. Well, the rumors of our extinction were slightly exaggerated. We just wanted a little peace and quiet. Well, if it's peace and quiet you want, you should stay clear of my homeworld for a bit. I reckon I'll be blowing up Rhinox for weeks. Cheerio! Painting with a fjord. I have to train the hummingbirds. They must be in peak physical condition if we're beautiful plumage. Sir, the situation is this. Yesterday at 1845 hours, the Rhinox invaded. We defended as best we could, sir. But without your leadership, we couldn't put up an effective resistance. By 1900 hours, the rest of the squad was captured, and the Rhinox had complete control of the base. I think... No, I've got unlimited ammo. So yeah, we just have a character that just straight up shoots missiles now. Do we have unlimited flight as well? Yes. Kirby? I wish to purchase a fish license. Whoa, whoa, you can do... What's this cool thing? Chat, what is this? Drop a bomb? I want to. What button is bomb drop? I can't do it yet. Like, why are we even playing a Spyro video game? I want Sergeant Bird, full game. What's the character's name? Sergeant Bird? <laughs> Did you know that Sergeant Bird, in real life, flew into the Hollow Earth? And I don't think you'll be able to blast your way through this one. I recommend you land on the weights and carry them to the pressure-sensitive security switches on either side of the door. When in position... Actually, no, it was Admiral Bird. Admiral B-Y-R-D was a pilot who... Um, was flying past Antarctica. And then, um, apparently... Oh wait, that's... Okay, I'm gonna need a bomb for that. Apparently, chat, according to Admiral Byrd's logs, went into the hollow earth. Can you believe it? Fa dinosaurs? Reptilians? What's the punchline? The punchline is Google Admiral Bird Hollow Earth. And you'll see that this is something that's, um... That's been around information that has been in many, many books. Someone said, oh god, this is real. Alright, quote-unquote real. I'm not saying that this is actually something that happened. However, this is a pretty famous story in regards to this quote-unquote hollow earth. Quote unquote Swiss cheese moon theory. But if you want to read something wild, just to, you know, enjoy your day, I think, um. Yeah, there you go. Admiral Bird, Hollow Earth, have fun.
Apparently there's giants in there too. So that's cool. They fled the earth during dinosaur times and just went into the earth instead. Dinosaur times. That's the appropriate, correct way to say uh, Jurassic or Triassic. Knocking about a bunch of cavemen. Knocking about with uh, dinosaurs and that. The crustaceous period. Chat, this is the crustaceous period. The times of my streams. 2010 AD to 20XX, question mark. Cavemen didn't exist during Dino Era. I, I know, Carl Pilkington thought that cavemen were knocking about with dinosaurs, though. They did, though. Yeah, but not like the T-Rex. What do you mean, yeah? I mean, well, maybe, like, big lizards were around when we were first knocking about. I don't know. I'm not smart. What do you want for- I don't know my- my, uh, theological. Big lizards, big birds, sure. Bird, Admiral Bird, dinosaurs, Hollow Earth, it all makes sense, come on. Someone said I missed a gem. Did I... I don't see it. Well, I mean, obviously there's this. But... Flat Earth? Nah, I'm all about the thick Earth. You know the Beatles song, Because? There's a lyric, Because the world is round, it turns me on. You know what that means? I don't know, actually, but... It sounds good as a lyric. Make the pants. Ready to be the brief, sir. How do you think Sting would feel if he knew that Stuart Copeland had the best? post-police career of anyone in that band. Sting would be livid. Sure, Sting sold out stadiums and had a bunch of albums with lutes and shit. Copeland? Spyro soundtrack. It would sting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Vinny, how do you feel about birds not being real? Um... I've never actually seen a bird. This is- no, it's just- this is what memes have become. Mission accomplished. It's great to have your back, sir. Hmm. 
Vinny, is Finland real? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand the birds not being real thing other than it's clearly... Um... It's, it's just... People love it. I don't know. People love this meme. Fucked up drone conspiracy turned into a meme? I don't know. I don't know where it originated from. But I've seen it pop up a lot. Is Ohio real? Well, I was talking about the Dakotas. I don't know about them Dakotas. I'm a little suspicious. West Dakota is the only Dakota that I'm aware of that is real for sure. Some idiots saw a couple of videos of drones that looked like birds and claimed that all birds are surveillance devices. Wait a minute, this actually has some level of... like... non-irony to it? I thought it was just like a bunch of idiots online saying that birds weren't real because it was funny to doubt something that we see on a daily basis. I thought it was just like a protest of, like, weird shit that people don't believe in. I'm gonna imagine that it started with the drone thing. Someone had a bit of a question. Maybe someone who's, like, already wondering about birds to begin with. Maybe someone who doubted birds from childhood. I don't know. And then it turned into... Let's protest. Sir, I protest. I am not a merry man! You invent a dumber conspiracy, and the world will invent a dumber believer for it. Okay. I'm still not convinced that the bird thing... ...that anyone believes that birds are fake. I, I really don't know... ...if a single person really believes that, or if it's all just ten layers of irony. I, I, I don't know. I can't... I'm sorry. Vinny, my conspiracy theory is that you're actually V-Dub's alter ego. What? Alright. Okay, we found something dumber than birds being real. Or fake. You think I would drink Mountain Dew? Get out of here. Mountain don't. Why do people hate Mountain Dew so much? Um, because I think it's just epic gamer soda. It, it's really more the, uh, the way it's used in conjunction with how, like, you know, it's advertised, I think. It is vaguely citrus flavored. I don't know what that flavor is, honestly. It's both, like, soda light and, and too much soda. It's really hard to describe. I mean, if you've had it, you know, but... 
battery acid. Well, I'm not going to say it's quite that bad, <laughs> but I don't really like Mountain Dew. I liked Mountain Dew Code Red the one time I tried it. But that was all just like... Again, it's just sugar. It's sugar and then vaguely cherry. So, I haven't had any other variants of that particular beverage. Uh, but I... You know, I'd, I'd rather not have a Mountain Dew, if I could help it. Have you not had Baja Blast? I have. I don't know... It To me, that's just like a Mountain Dew type thing, is it? Is it not? I still haven't had soda in a long time, so... I don't really remember. In my memory, honestly, the last soda I had was Mountain Dew, because last time V-Dub was here, he left some, and I tried some. Uh, so that's the last soda that I, I think I could... Aside from ginger ale, which I do have every now, now and then. But talking about, like, specifically, like, gamer soda... missing a couple gems. Here I am. I'm, I'm specifically telling chat that I don't want the 100%, and then knowing that I miss gems is a nightmare. ever the most helpful dragonfly, but there we go. Vinny, this song is driving me fucking insane. <laughs> I know! Have you tried the Coke coffee? Um, well, no. Will I try the Coke coffee? I want to. I just want to see what it's like. I haven't seen it. I forgot about it. Like, I think I put it out of my mind the, the moment I learned about it. I kind of want to try it and do a review of it. Banana Sprite? <laughs> what? Is that real? I think I would try that. <laughs> For some reason, drinking Sprite after eating a banana makes you throw up. Speaking from experience, chat member, like, is this a you thing? Why, why have you, like, in that specific order? What if you do one over, like, before the other? It, it's true, it happens. Is it a challenge, like the, the cinnamon challenge? It's an old meme. Every day I learn something new about the internet. When I say the internet, apparently there were videos going around about this. It was, um, it was being spread around in, like, 2014, 2010 to 2014. I've never heard about this. Which, what order is it? You drink Sprite and then eat a banana and then you fucking puke?
So, for the record, they're not talking about drinking a bunch of Sprite and then deep-throating a banana, right? Because that would make more sense. That's how you vomit, now! Why word it like that? Well, you knew what I was talking about. Listen, with verbiage, we must be concise and use terms that we know to describe things that we know we know. And that others might know. We know they know. So, deep throat a banana, henceforth, was the most appropriate and expeditious way to describe that exact situation. forced us to build a statue of the sorceress. Then after we built it, she complained it was too ugly. Huh. If you ask me, the statue is far prettier than she is. Snake, it's me. Deep throat. Ah, deep throat. Snake, I just drank a Sprite. And? Tell me about it. What happened? What? There's nothing happened. Nothing happened, chat. I, I... I drank the Sprite. It was... it was good. Nothing happens. That's the bit! The bit's over! You're still here? Go home! <laughs> Bananas don't compress. Someone said something about- I- I- it went too quick, the chat's moving very quickly, so I can't... I can't read it, but so, someone said something about bananas not compressing, which leads to the vomit- <laughs> What is this co- Oh. Well, I had to go shopping today, I needed to do some- some shopping. And, uh, I got... What did I get? That hint? Shit. That is water with a slight hint of flavor. But yet, it doesn't annoy me like LaCroix does. It's not carbonated. It's okay. No, it's just water with like a slight bit of flavor. It's really nothing special. But, you know, you drink it cold, it's good. The lack of bitterness is probably better. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I don't hate it that much. I don't- I, I get it from time to time. I like that. Like, otherwise, I'm just drinking iced tea and water, mostly. Uh, Snapple every now and then. I mean, that's sugary as fuck, but... That's like... It's good with lunch. Try to... I like the orangeade. I like peach tea. Apple's pretty good, too. Fruit punch is good, but that's very sugary. Well, they're all sugary, but, you know, pick your poison, I guess. Mm, hot banana water. Mm. Just like Grandma used to make. What else did I get? I got English muffins. 
so that I could enjoy my jelly. <laughs> um... Uh, just some stuff. Side dishes, that kind of- I didn't really get too much, but essentially what I'm trying to say is... Um... That soda is never really on the- on the menu for me anymore. I- I miss it to some extent, but I think I miss the addiction to soda more than I miss the soda. Uh, I didn't even get ginger ale this time. I've been uh, not ginger ailing. I got minger ale instead. Statue. Almost done. Oops. I forgot I hid this egg inside the statue. I hope the explosion didn't hard boil it. The new version of the song is really different. I kind of like this one better. Those trumpets were grating after a while. It sounds like a ringtone. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, but it's, it's like it works better for prolonged periods of time as opposed to hearing those butt trumpets. Constantly. For prolapsed periods of time. Sergeant Bird's level has a different remix of the original Sergeant Bird music? That's probably a good idea. Alright, skater bros. Seen? Once you've mastered a few tricks, you could really rack up a huge score in this place. What do you say I show you some moves? Let's start with something easy. You can jump off the end of ramps by pressing... <sighs> okay, now try doing a roll. You can roll in midair by holding down the app... Yay! Now let's see you pull a flip. 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 <laughs> Whoa, you must be a natural. Now let's see if you can pull off a half pipe spin move. The blue ramps are half pipes. You can do a spin move by jumping at the top of the blue ramp. Okay.
That was almost like a 1080. All right, you nailed it. Now let's see if you can do a 900. Get as much height oh, as you can. Fucking hell. Spin two and a half revolutions in. <laughs> what if Tony Hawk didn't land the 900? Says a chat member. Then no one else would have ever been able to do one. Now that was a 900. I have to admit, you've got some skill, Spyro. It's like the undrith monkey. Too cocky. Let's see if you can score some real points on the giant. Like if Tony Hawk didn't do these Whatever tricks for the first time, then no one else would have been able to. Then again, you are being trained by a master boarder. Speaking of which, I was just practicing this nearly impossible new move that I call the Nasty Nork. I had just about pulled it off when suddenly I ran smack into this dragon egg and wiped out. Okay, I made that up, but you can still have this egg. All oh, right, Tony Hawk isn't real because it, uh, bird. Imagine being born with the name Hawk and not being a skateboarder. Or like doing something that grounds you. Like Mike. Mike Hawk. What are you gonna do then? Penetrate the earth? As, you know, and dig? That was awful. I deserve every minus two chat's giving me right now. I know. I, I know. Does the cheetah have another egg for me? Think about it. It may seem all cool, like I'm getting an egg, you know, for doing this stuff, but dude's holding these eggs captive. I think he knows that there's life in there, and he's still just, you know, just keeping them until Spyro does his arbitrary tasks. I want to see some sick tricks before I let this little dragon, this real life thing, this a being of flesh and blood free, my dude, my scro. original version of the song is better? Let's find out. There's not gonna be enough... speed for that. That was a big jump, but I still need to get the gem up there. Hmm. 
turn into the off ramp. What? Damn it. It's just not the same when you're not getting points. Man, skateboarding has been a really popular thing on the stream lately. Skateboarding and like um, rimming, rim world. Rim world was popular. It'll be, we're going to do more rim world. S season two will be um, soon. Rim world. Chat. Rim world. Well, uh, su season, Susan two. Please. You unlock points after the second challenge. Well, I need to get that. I want to get the gems first, chat. Ugh. Get high and glide. Isarum. get there. I'll try it like this. Fuck. Oh. You woke up one of the kittens on my lap and now they're all waking up. Why is your volume loud? That's not even the loudest I've ever been. That's like mildly loud. Headphones won't wake kittens up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to get that, chat. Um, get high and glide. Alright, well, let's see. You're probably right. Probably something like this. Perfect. Hey Hunter, how do I start your next mission? Yeah, let's right. do it. Whoever scores the most points in the time limit wins. Hunter, you were going down. Oof. Really a whole lot of um not really a whole lot of stuff you can do for points. Most of it's just spinning. That's a good trick.
so you can maybe yeah do a flip into that seems pretty good Oh yeah. Going down, Hunter. Eight seconds. I can't Spin in an angle? How did you get so good already? Who knows? Maybe someday you'll even break my course record. <laughs> nah. Anyway, I guess I should give you this other egg I found. I was gonna keep it for a pet, but I can't get it to hatch. Great. Your dragon is defective and has farted bubbles. You can go for the Return. record now if you want. Whenever you hop on a skateboard, a ton Return the dragon to the store. So let's see. Ah. Spyro Punk Fuck up, Samurai. Have you seen the movie Speed? Well, I think it's a pretty fucking good movie, Samurai. Speed's alright. Keanu is getting good. I have to rely on chat because in my mind, my Jeff Goldblum impression is spot on. But then when I hear it played back or when chat hears it, it's like, I'm sorry, who's that impression of? Is that your next door neighbor? Uh, yeah, yeah. hello? Yeah, it's, this is the Jeff Goldblum uh, impression. Uh. See what I mean? Awful. Irredeemable. Some people are being nice in chat and saying that it's good. Bless you. Some voices are just not... Like, I think even the best impressionists... You're still limited by your vocal cords. Like, Dana Carvey is one of my favorites. And he... probably can't do a number of impressions. Maybe even some that I can. Can he do Tinky Winky? I don't know! Can he do Watto? That's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know, maybe my vocal cords are spe specifically suited for Rizzo the Rat and Watto the Watt. Hey, y'all. Watto the Watt here. Or as Dave would say in chat, Hey, everyone. Dave the Waz here. Hello, everyone. 
Greetings, all. <laughs> hey, folks. Hey, folks. Salutations, viewers. I mean, you'd imagine every YouTuber's intro has been taken at this point. Like, there's nothing new that you can do with a YouTuber intro. It's like, uh, she says did a little, um, video called Region Break. Where, ugh, he showed the differences between Zelda 2 in the US and Zelda 2, uh, Japan. And there's a lot of differences. This is not an original idea. He knows it's not, I know it's not, you know it's not. There have been a million videos. It's a good video. I mean, I enjoyed it. I learned some new stuff. But I'm just saying, this is not an original idea. So there is a YouTuber who made a parody video saying, Shit says, stole my idea. They hadn't made a video in four years. There was a joke. It was a parody. <laughs> they weren't seriously mad. They were just joking around. But then people jumped down their throat like, You don't own parody videos. And then other people were like, Yeah, she says, why'd you take his video? And it's like... It was all just a joke. It didn't turn into any real drama. It wasn't anything like... You know, it wasn't anything real. But even without that one YouTuber who did a region difference video four years ago for Zelda 2 or five years ago, I've seen that material a million times. That concept of showing the differences between versions of a game is as old as piss. So, you know, there's like, what I'm trying to say is, my point is that the YouTube thing... It's getting hard to find original concepts. And an original intro that doesn't involve, hey viewers... Hi everyone. If you can find one, you're already ahead of the curve. Kind regards, masses. Get the bone? This level is confusing me. Why do I need that bone? You didn't pick up the bone. Why do I need the bone? Bone, please play boop web. The bone is a collectible. Fly to the island past the portal. I, this level is very confusing to me. I don't know why. Part of it was me just talking shite and not paying attention. The other part of it, it just seems like a... These multi-layered levels can be kind of tricky. Hot take, said someone, this is lazy game design. It's also late, two th uh, late 90s game design, lazy or not. I think Spyro mostly has good levels. I really enjoyed Spyro 2's levels. This game, I like the smaller worlds. But um, I can see where you're coming from, even if I don't fully agree. But hey, even, like, Spyro 1 and 2 had some levels that I wanted to throw off a fucking roof. It happens. I'm 
Mario 64, great platformer. Couple shitty levels. But I'm just I'm just getting confused, that's all. This, it's... I'm ready to patrol the towers and the perimeter of the eyelids whenever you want me to. It's good to be back in action. We'll just bird it up real quick. Well, this makes my life a lot easier. You're doing great! Please find the rest of the bones so we can put my friend back together. Yeah, this seriously changes everything. So, from what I'm learning is, not all of this level is designed for Spyro. <laughs> there you go. If it was, and it was like that treetops level from Spyro 1, I would have probably had a lot. I mean, that's what I thought this was. That would have been not good. Because I, I the vertical levels in Spyro usually confuse me. Which is more of a me problem, but that treetops level sucks. Treetop level is dubious. It is a bit mistrustful. That's, that's much better. Just get to fly around, be a fucking bird, whatever. Whoever. Penguins don't fly, Vinny. Come to think of it, these flaps are suspiciously small. Spyro the Dragon. Known for their powers of flight. Can't fly as well as this tiny flapped little penguin. An animal that traditionally does not fly. Hmm. Dragons are fake. What if... Dragons were real. What if... In our history, people saw dragons, but they just went extinct. And we've confused dinosaur bones for dragons, or vice versa. Dragons do pop up in, like, every region's mythology for some reason. I actually did read something about that, like how it is... It is a very common thing to see in many mythologies. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any answers. Maybe they're just cool as fuck. My favorite dragon? Smaug. S yes. Smaug. Remake or original? Remake? You mean the movie? Eh. Benedict Cunt Punch did a pretty good job as Smaug. Uh, the movie wasn't... 
what I will say about the the Hobbit movie is that they didn't fuck up the smog sections as far as I'm concerned. The this the dialogue at least. I think they they kept pretty accurate to the writing. And uh I I thought it was handled pretty well. The Gollum stuff was good. So yeah, I think it, it was all right. But you know, the book the book I'm talking about, like the Smaug book version. Where is this last bone? The rubbery CGI orcs or what ruined it? Mate, the Hobbit movies had way more problems than just CG orcs. Forced love plot, Legolas, um, jumping upstairs, like... I mean, the, Legolas is not even supposed to be in there. But anyway, um, it was because Peter Jackson, I've, I've said this, but I don't blame Peter Jackson, it's because Del Toro left the project. And basically, they didn't give the studio, I think WB didn't give Peter Jackson the same amount of pre-production that he had for Lord of the Rings. Which was years. Years of pre-production. And then it was like, uh, yeah, well, Del Toro dropped out, so Peter, can you just, you know, do this? You don't need the same amount of pre-production time, right? He didn't have years for Lord of the Rings to prep. Chat member? Chat member said not years, but okay. Here, have this. 1997. They started. Uh, Sphinx is right. It's true. is feeling much better now. Oh no. He started his bone dance again. Oh no. I don't want to see the bone dance. The chat member said that two to three years didn't really count as years for them. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, technically it is years. Well... Thank you... Oh... Oh no... Oh no... I'll try to get the last gem, whatever I'm missing. Uh, this... How do I get in here, chat? Can I get in here yet, anyway? Or no? Spyro 2. Oh, Spyro. So, uh, if, if Lord of the Rings had two to three years of pre-production... Not even just pre-production, just, just... PJ... PJ thinking about it. Ready to patrol the towers and I'll be hit. Uh, the Hobbit was a couple months. Oh, this is a whole other thing. All right, I'm gonna stop here now, then, because um, I don't want to do this now and then. Yeah, this, this, there's more stuff here. We'll, we'll just come back. And so, um. Essentially, it's been covered in videos a million times, but essentially what happened with The Hobbit was this. While I'm quitting out, I'll tell you that he did his best. They had to restart the whole production. They had to throw away all of the designs from Del Toro, because that's a different movie. And, uh... And then they just filmed. And sometimes they would film for like 12 to 15 hour long days, and they would rewrite dialogue on the spot because they didn't have enough time to plan. Sometimes Peter Jackson would start a scene with no storyboarding and no idea what he was going to shoot. By the time 
they got to the second movie, it really was supposed to be two movies, but they got to a battle scene for the Battle of the Five Armies. And all they had on the page was they fight. <laughs> we should help her. You're kidding, right? She nearly toasted you. Yeah, but she was aiming at you. That's it. problem. It's a good thing for you Hunter was around. I can look after myself. Oh, sure you can. <laughs> Would you like me to show you? Uh... Out of magic, huh? How about I give you a jump start? <laughs> I'll deal with you later. <laughs> hey, why'd you have to scare her off? Cool. Vinny, I'm currently working on Thor 4, and some of us had 17-hour days. Jesus, can you put in a good word with Chris for me? Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, I guess, um... I guess someone said maybe Peter Jackson uh, should have read the fucking book in regards to The Hobbit. I really think he did. I really think if anyone can pull off Lord of the Rings the way he did... I, I do blame him for some of it. The excess was definitely a problem uh, for The Hobbit. But I think if he had more time, and there was also like some kind of labor strike or something happening around the time of The Hobbit, and I think the studio at some point was just like, hey, we need, we need the movies. We need more. We need three. But also, they didn't have a battle scene, so the only way they could finish the movie was if they delayed, and giving themselves an extra movie was a way to actually finish writing and filming the fucking movie. So I blame Peter Jackson for some of it, but not all of it. It was mostly studio fuckery. Honestly, I hate to say it like this, it was kind of mostly Del Toro for doing years of pre-production, or over a year, and then dropping out last minute. But he knew he couldn't handle it. So, he, he felt like he was getting stressed out, probably, and he just said, I can't do this. Too much pressure. Fair. But it, it ended up fucking everything over. Still, the Hobbit movies, the recut versions, I heard, were not that bad. There's a cut called the Bilbo Cut, which focuses just on Martin Freeman as Bilbo, mostly. Also, the first Hobbit movie, it should have been one movie. <laughs> Like, one long movie would have been fine for The Hobbit. Or, you know, two shorter movies. But, um, I think the first movie's pretty okay. The CG orcs definitely ruin a lot. But, like I said, that's only the beginning of those movies' problems. That, and then they tried to do the horrendous 48 frames a second, and, and then they color-corrected everyone to have a red tint. Yeah. Unfortunate. Could have been so much better. But there's hints... There's hints of greatness in there. The, heck, the casting was good, and there were some really uh, good scenes, especially in the first one. It's just a shame it never pulled together the way it should have. Oh well. Anyway, thank you for watching, um, Spyro, and listening to me rant about the Hobbit movies yet again. Uh, more Spyro next week. Tomorrow is Sunday stream, as you know. And Sunday stream this week will include DOS games. That's your only hint. And more. But we're going to take a look into the uh, the deep side of the DOS pool. I think you'll enjoy it. 
I'm looking forward to it. Speaking of lost media, one of the things I like to do is check out all these old crusty DOS games. So it, it should be fun. Uh, but yeah, everybody, thank you for watching. We're going to take a quick look at the art. Okay, it's not going to be a quick look. But this one is from Hunter Kane. Here's a Vine Shroom lad. Hang on a second, let me get some music. I see what you're doing here, uh, Twilight, with putting Xenoblade music into the, uh, into the thing. Is this the funny skeleton? Oh, it is the funny skeleton. I get it. All right. Thanks. Juveland made this. Very nice. Here's one from Osoto or Okoto. It said here, it tried to draw Vinny in the style of Corto Maltese. I don't know Corto Maltese. But pretty cool. Nice art. Carrie and Doll made this. It's a famous Italian comic. Oh, okay. Carrie and Doll made this. Awesome work. Little Spyro. There's a meat. <laughs> meat would be the dragonfly. Awesome. But yeah, custom Spyro. Slime and Gelmont made this, or Gelmont. Sir, we seem to be heading toward a goblin nebula. We're getting a transmission that says, Pain. Amazing. Good, good. Nice work. <laughs> the Goblin Nebula. Sir, we must set a collision course for the Goblin Nebula. Here's one from Owen2A03. A couple of shrooms. Some good shrooms. I appreciate them. Lightning Kayo made this. I'm a joke, Tails. Chili dog, speed. You're too slow. Yes. <laughs> I, I wonder why you would say that. Ayana the Dork made this. I'm not a particularly Valentine's Day minded person, as I've said in the past. But I can appreciate this. It's a cool shroom. With roses, very good. Valentine Day shroom. Um, Majester made Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple. Olmec as Olmec. You must first cross the shrine of the silver monkey. Only then can you get the Kapala, which will give you more health per blood you drink. Then you will find the compass of Henry Hudson. Very nice. Here's one from Acid for Blood. Well, this is relevant, as per my Pokemon card video. Beat your meat, flip a coin if Tails, this attack does nothing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Lonely Earthworm Pokemon. Length 6-9. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> Aoba is here, made a BRB. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool BRB. Can definitely use that.
Yeah, good work. Let's see this next animation from Cygnus. Here's a BRB. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that, that's a great BRB. I'll definitely use that. I kind of want to know who at CD Projekt Red designed the Shrimp Lady. And I want to let them know how big of a meme Shrimp Lady has become. For us, at least. Be great. Shanguin made this. Oh. I made this piece based off of Far Away from Realign, more specifically focusing on the visual aspect of the lyrics in the wake of the flow. Cool, thank you. Uh, damn. It's really nice. I, uh... I like that line too. I don't know if that's conceited of me to say. I don't know where it came from. It was just like, a, it popped into my head. And I was like, oh, that's a cool line. I don't know what it means. But hey, great work. It's really cool. I mean, I know what it means to me now, but... <laughs> Very good. I like this art. Here's one from Ghost Sym Symphony. I like this art too. This is really... Wow. Shrimp Lady now has... Shrimp Lady has a goddamn painting now, done traditional. I just realized something. Is Shrimp Lady have a little fan on the inside? Did I? Oh yeah, she does. Yeah. I guess I just thought that was part of the design. I never really thought about it. Very cool. Here's a BRB from Mirko. Good, thank you. Shrimp Lady appreciates you making traditional art. Cyberpunk probably spent less time on this character than the Vine Sauce fans have. There are lines that have been cut, and I will show you at some point. Here's a BRB. Cool. Little alien fella. May I ask who that is on the right? Tarantino? I'm not sure. I really like the BRB though. Here's one from Rubber Skin. It says here, Vinny's signature hat was kept by Samus. This is the reason why it has disappeared for years now. I have the hat. <laughs> no, I have, I have it. I have three of them. My original one and two more. I guess that's one of those things that I lost it for a little while. But I think sometimes people just pick up things and run with it and then it, it propagates into this weird story. I, I don't know, but I, it turned into I couldn't find it for like a month and I never said I really like fully lost. I think I just said I can't find the hat, which fair enough. That's implicit of me losing the hat. But um, it turned into this, like, lost relic of Vine Sauce history. <laughs> I've had a lot of people email me and say, Hey, Vinny, I know you lost your famous hat. I'll make you a new one. I'm like, wait, what? But, um... Maybe they were never around when you mentioned you found it. True. Fair. I mean, I don't know how many times I said I lost the hat, but I... Listen, I'm probably just... The game of telephone is a real thing, and I'm probably just as likely one to blame for it. But... The reason why it has disappeared for so many years now, if you had obtained 69% completion, then you would have gotten it back. <laughs> However, Vinny failed. We'll have to wait for the next Super Metroid to try and get it back. Well, I like the art. Um, hat lore aside. There, sh there she is. I like it a lot. Really cool. And Exetic made some Spyro art. Also cool. Watching VODs also makes it hard to remember if it was something that was recent or not. Yeah, fair. I understand. 
Uh, yeah, and some people watch streams from years ago and they bring up something that I mentioned on stream like in passing years ago. I'm like, I don't remember saying that. I'm sorry. But it happens. All right, chat. It's yam. It's 10 past yam. I'm going to bed. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. Sunday stream tomorrow. Um, I appreciate you watching. Appreciate the support. And um, I, I am happy to continue streaming for you. So thanks. Take care. And see you for Sunday stream. If you want to watch other streamers wait here for auto hosts throughout the day or now, it'll take you to a random streamer that you might find that you might like. So uh, good night and see you tomorrow and uh, stay safe. Since my sister played this game, she blowed me off. Just out of curiosity, I also downloaded this game. First recharge to get SS Pock mode, I tried and got it directly. Take another look at the gacha. Use a free draw first. Get the SS Pock mode again. Awesome. Take a look at the trainer out of print. There are also limited Pock mode mounts. It's an amazing 90% discount. I said, now that a set of SS lineups are built up, it costs less than $10. No one.